Indie Authors, Use Your Cover to Sell Your Book by Shoshana Gabriel, also known as Shoshana Evers. I'm the co-founder of selfpubbookcovers.com. What we'll cover today. Discover how to maximize your book covers to increase the chance readers will click and buy your book. Learn how to utilize genre expectations, typography, and major visuals to reach your target readers. Determine which sort of cover creating process is best for you at this point in your career and budget, whether it's do-it-yourself, pre-made, or custom designed, and know how to get the best cover for your book, no matter which type of cover you use. And avoid the book cover mistakes that will negatively impact your sales. This presentation will not focus on SPBC specifically, but instead will focus on how to get the very best book cover. Whether you do it yourself, or buy a pre-made from ours or any other site, or have one custom designed. No matter where you get your cover from, it needs to accomplish one goal, to get readers interested in your book. Now, if you can look on Amazon Books and immediately know which book is self-published and which book is published by one of the big five New York publishers, then the self-published book is doing it wrong. You shouldn't be able to know which one is self-published. It needs to stand with the others and look awesome. The general reader doesn't care who the publisher is anymore. They rarely will look to see whether a book is self-published published by a small press they've never heard of before, or published by Simon & Schuster. Readers do not notice this sort of thing in general. We as authors and readers, we're the ones that notice, but that's because we're authors. Most readers, they do not care. However, the reader expects that the book is going to be 100% professionally presented. On the inside, that means a well-edited story, no typos or continuity problems, a fully rounded out plot and characters, etc. Readers expect the interior ebook or paperback formatting to be flawless. They want their book to work. Having a professional book cover that looks great and is indistinguishable from a traditionally published book cover is your way of telling readers, it's okay, it's safe to read this book. I didn't just throw this out there. I made this book as good as possible for you. Genre expectations. Uh, I have an image here of some genres, different categories. Uh, this is actually the menu that goes on, on our website because you can click on any of the genres to search for covers. So that means, first of all, you need to know what your genre is. Um, now that seems pretty obvious, but there's always, you know, the author who says, well, I, you know, it's unlike anything that's ever been written before. And, you know, I sincerely doubt that because at some point your book has to go on a shelf, whether it's a, a digital shelf or, um, physical bookshelf and the book clerk or the Amazon algorithm or wherever, they need to know what sign should be on that shelf. Are they going to put your book in, you know, the romance section or are they going to put it in the sci-fi and fantasy section? Um, I have a list of genres here, romance, sci-fi, romantic suspense, thriller, cozy mystery, inspirational fiction, narrative memoir, erotica, western, historical, or a mashup such as western historical romance or sci-fi erotica um, or inspirational mystery. I mean, there's so many different ways you can mash these together, but you're, you're probably going to have some sort of genre that you can focus in on as this is the main genre. So you want to make sure that your cover shows the reader, this is my genre. Look on Amazon's bestseller list for your genre. So if you write romance, which is what I write, I would look under uh, Amazon romance books, Amazon romance bestseller books. And then you can get a feel for what covers in your genre look like. 
you don't necessarily want a cover that's completely original and unlike other covers because if it is readers may not know to click on your book you want them to see your book and say oh I love this sort of book and then they click on it if your thriller cover looks like a romance cover even though there's not a shred of romance in it the people that are going to click on that book are romance readers and then when they read the blurb and they see it's not a romance, they're not going to buy your book. So you want thriller readers to click on your book. And that means your cover has to scream thriller. Each genre has different aspects associated with their covers. Study the best-selling books in your genre and you will easily discern many elements that occur again and again. For example, okay, now we get to have fun looking at covers. Here's a romance book. Uh, romances often feature a man and a woman embracing. Um, you might see a man with his shirt off for an erotic romance or a sexy romance. If you have a western, you might see a man in a cowboy hat or a horse or both. Um, if you're looking at a, a science fiction cover or a space opera, you might see a spaceship or an alien. Um, on a thriller cover, you can often find blood or a dark forest or a knife. This is a very spooky looking cover here with the, the dark forest again. Don't be afraid to utilize the tropes of your genre on your cover with the major visuals. Remember, the goal is to get your target readers to click, not to be the most original cover ever. Now when I say that, I don't mean you want clone covers. I mean, you want to know, okay, this is my cover. There's nothing exactly like it, but there may be another cover that's for a fantasy that also has a dragon on it. And that's okay because maybe it has a different background visual, um, different typography, that sort of thing. And as we can guess, this is, this would be a fantasy cover and it's utilizing the tropes of the genre. Typography. The way your typography, which is the text on the cover, appears can also be genre related. Um, there are fonts that look romantic or playful or scary or antique, etc. Playing with which font you use can change the tone of a cover. Um, here on top we have kind of a spooky cover and the font looks good with that. And over here underneath that, more of a kind of like a chick lit cover rather font and um, it's more playful so you can you can change the way that your your text would look uh, whether you're asking your artist for your custom design to do something different with the typography um, or you are trying to figure out a way to make your cover showcase your genre better. Font size. It's a good idea to have your title or a part of your title legible in thumbnail size. If you're branding your name, which is a great idea, then make your author name large enough to be seen in thumbnail and branded the same across all your covers. Think of how tiny your cover looks on your phone when it's surrounded by other covers in the Kindle store. For some readers, it may even be in black and white on their e-reader. So make sure your cover looks great in thumbnail size with an easily discernible major visual image, text you can read, and that doesn't look all washed out or like a gray blob when it's in black and white. Where are you at this point in your career and budget? because that might be part of what helps determine whether you choose to make your cover yourself, buy a pre-made cover, or get a custom cover designed. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of different ways of obtaining your cover. This is do-it-yourself covers, DIY covers. Uh, the image I have here is an example of a cover that I made myself now I am not a cover artist. I know I am the co-founder of a cover company, but I, I am not an artist. I am, I am an author. And yet I chose to just make a quick cover myself here because I wanted to put up um, 
something that says the real cover is coming soon. I wanted something for my blog post that went with the blurb, but I didn't want to reveal the final cover. So I, I made this myself in Canva, uh, which is canva.com. I really, I like that. I also use the program paint and it's just simple. And the main point of it is to say, this is a book that's coming soon. So the pros of do it yourself are that it's free or very cheap, maybe a few dollars for a photo license uh, to use the photo. If you are an artist, you can utilize numerous images in your cover, filters, other effects. You can make it look exactly the way you want it. Cons of doing it yourself. If you only use one stock photo, you'll see clone covers where other authors had the same idea where they see the same photo and they say, Oh, I love this photo. I'm going to take this photo and I'm going to add some text onto it. Um, and now all of a sudden you have the exact same cover. Um, incidentally, this is why we personally, we require covers to utilize a minimum of two stock photos at self pub book covers. Um, it's to avoid clone covers. No matter what you're going to see, even if, if you, if you're going with a custom design cover, if they're using stock photos, which most places do, you're going to see at least one of those images somewhere else on someone else's cover. Uh, it just happens. If you're not artistically gifted, the cover may look homemade instead of professional. And if it looks homemade, that can turn off the reader because they're going to think that the interior of the book um, is like that as well, even if it's not. Pre-made covers. Now the pros of pre-made covers are they are affordable. They're more expensive than doing it yourself, but they're less expensive than custom covers in general. Um, pre-made covers are professionally designed by artists. You can see what your cover will look like before purchasing it, so you know you'll be happy with it. Pre-made covers should be one of a kind, as in sold once and not again. One of the nice things about pre-made covers, now I know this is not necessarily true if it's, if it's not coming from us, but um, you can play with the typography and make changes even after you buy the cover on our site. Pre-made covers are good for authors who know what they like when they see it, but they don't have one specific cover idea in mind. Cons of pre-mades. The model on the cover may not exactly match how you imagined your protagonist to look. The model probably is not going to match because the artist hadn't read your book or look, you know, gotten a briefing on it before making the cover. Um, if you have your heart set on exactly how you want your cover to look, it will be difficult to find a pre-made cover to match that. That's just a fact. If you know in your heart what your book cover needs to look like exactly, you're, you're going to need to do it yourself or, or get a custom cover. There may be a key element um, with a pre-made cover from your story that's missing from the cover, such as a special locket that the heroine wears or a specific tattoo that your hero has. Sometimes you can ask the artist to make a modification to a pre-made cover to add something important. important. So if, if the special locket is a major part of the story, I would expect her to have a locket. So in that case, if it's, if it's missing, you, you're going to probably have to ask an artist to, to make a change and it's going to cost more money. Um, it is harder to find pre-mades fit for a branded series, although sometimes you can. Sometimes people will sell covers only as sets. So they'll sell three covers that look kind of similar as a set. Um, Sometimes you can add a series logo or use typographical branding um, and colors to fit a series. So it is possible to do a branded series with pre-mades. It's not going to be as easy as it is with custom covers. Custom designed covers. The pros of a custom designed cover, there are many. You have a professional cover. It's specific to your story. The models can look just like you imagined them. Um, in some cases, you can even 
hire a photographer, rent costumes, hire models, and have the exact cover you envisioned created. This is if you have a really big budget, um, and especially if it's a historical or fantasy, you may want to do that. But if you if you have the money and you're looking for the tax write-off and you just want to you want to spend what you want to spend and get the perfect cover, there are ways that you can you can really go above and beyond with a custom designed cover, including a custom photo shoot. While a custom cover often will utilize stock photo images, as mine does here, um, and you may see those same images used in other covers, your cover will never be the exact same as another because of the various differences added to your cover to fit your story. And that can be true of pre-mades as well, as long as the artist uses more than one major visual. Professional typography effects can make a cover look really awesome. Sometimes the typography can really make or break a cover. Cons of custom design covers. They can be expensive. Um, there may be a wait list for the artist, and you may have to wait weeks, sometimes even months if it's a highly sought after artist. Even if you, are, you don't have much of a wait for the actual artist, they have to find out information from you about your book, and then they have to create the art from scratch. And there's usually quite a bit of back and forth with the artist until the final cover looks the way you want it to look. Some authors use all three types of covers. Um, they use do-it-yourself for coming soon placeholder covers or free short stories on their website or pre-made covers for books that are low priced, 99 cents to 2.99, when it may take a while to earn back the cost of a more expensive cover. And then custom covers for higher priced books, best-selling books, or books in a series. So you don't have to pick one and stick with it. You can, you can do different things for different books and at different places in your career and for different budgets. Book cover mistakes that will negatively impact your sales. Okay, so one example is using a cover that your nephew made for you simply because he put a lot of effort into it even if it's not a good cover for your book. I see that a lot with books that get recovered. You know, somebody will start off with a book and they used a do-it-yourself cover that was actually made by a friend or their son or something like that. And they love the cover because they love the person, but then they have to admit that the cover is not selling the book. It's not helping and they need a professional cover, so they recover it. Um, on the, in the same vein, using a DIY cover that is clearly DIY. If you make your own cover, the reader should not be able to notice. For certain genres, there are images that will get you put in the Amazon dungeon. There's also an iBooks dungeon. Um, Nudity, simulated sex acts, even if they're not nude, in some cases, guns. This means that Amazon or iBooks has made your book harder to discover for readers. They, it almost, it just changes the algorithms. It kind of shadow bans them in some cases. So they'll kind of hide them away unless someone is specifically searching for that author or book title. If you can easily think of three people who the image on the cover would greatly offend, you'll probably lose readers over it. That doesn't mean don't use it because free speech, but it may be negatively impacting your sales. Um, unreadable text. In general, don't use dark red on top of black or dark blue on top of black. Um, don't use a shadow around very dark color lettering because then it just looks blurry, like your text is blurred. A bit of a white glow like on that other cover or a black shadow around the lettering can make the text stand out against the background, make it really pop, but too much can just wash it out. Do not have a cover where the reader can't tell what sort of book it is. So you can show your cover to some readers who don't know what you write and ask them, what sort of book do you think this is? If they have no idea, the cover is not doing its job. If they guess the wrong genre, the cover is not doing its job. 
So based on the title and the cover, with these covers, for example, a reader should be able to say, this looks like a sweet contemporary Western romance, or this is a psychological thriller about a killer. And even though they haven't read the blurb, just by looking at the cover and the title that you've given it, they have a good idea of what it is. And if they can say that and they're right, then your book cover is doing its job. Getting to purchase. Here I have a screen grab of an Amazon product page. This is a cover. Um, this is actually one of our book covers that this author used. And perhaps you have done a search and you're looking for this type of, of book and you see the cover and this is what you want. So you click on it and it's the cover that gets the reader to click over to the product page. That's why the cover has to be good. Once you're on the product page, the blurb convinces the reader to read the sample pages. So if the cover is great and the blurb is not, they're not going to want to read the sample pages. So you need, you need to have both. You know, the blurb, you're going to want to also show what type of book it is, what it's about, um, what's at stake. That's a whole nother presentation. Uh, so if the blurb is great, then the reader is going to want to read the sample pages. The sample pages convince the reader to purchase the book. So assuming that you have a great book, if you're not getting sales, look at your blurb again. And if your blurb is great and you have different people read it and agree, uh, there are sometimes you can even pay people who their job is writing blurbs. If the blurb is great, the book is, the actual book itself is great, you're still not getting sales, it's time to look at the cover and see, is because it's the cover that starts the whole process of getting the reader to click. So you have to make sure that your cover is working for you and not against you. And that's it. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions about selfpubbookcovers.com, you can visit us online or email us at sales at selfpubbookcovers.com. We have an FAQ on there um, on the bottom menu and much more on the website that might be helpful to you. There's actually a free book download of um, successful self-publishing, how we do it and how you can too. It's a book that I, I compiled with advice from different indie authors, and that's a free download that's available on the website if you're interested. And I would love to keep in touch with you, and please email me, um, ask questions, check us out. This is a screen grab from our homepage at selfpubbookcovers.com. Um, I really hope you visit us and thank you so much for letting me speak with you today about book covers and how they can help you as an indie author to sell your book.